a little bit earlier today, OpenAI just announced a few brand new GPT-5 models. And what I wanna do for you guys today is show you how you can get this set up in N8. And whether you're trying to update your older models into GPT-5 mini or nano, or if you are trying to connect OpenAI into N8N for the first time so you can have it work with an AI agent, this tutorial is gonna be covering both of those aspects. So with this out of the way, let's take a look at how we can get this done. All right, so I'll be taking you guys through the steps on setting up GPT-5. Uh, or if you want to use mini or nano in NAN. So the first step you want to do is you want to open up this admin panel over here. Now, I already have it open as another tab on my screen, but just go over here, go to your admin panel. What I'm going to do is click over here to manage. And what I did first is I just updated my NAN version just in case in the AI agent, it didn't have the brand new five models. Again, it could be there in older versions, but I would just recommend updating over here. Uh, so I'm over on 1.106.1, and that is the version I'm using. Okay, second thing you're going to need is an OpenAI account. So go to openai.com, and then just click a login on the side of things and go to the API platform. Now, I've already created an account, so uh, make sure you guys do that as well. And I'll show you step-by-step step on how we can get this API key here in a second. Okay, so we're going to just start off with a chat trigger node. Again, you don't necessarily need to use a chat trigger node to set up. Uh, your AI agent, but just for ease of use and just showing you guys how this works, I'm going to do that. So what we're going to do over here is go chat and you'll see a chat trigger and that just starts our workflow on this side of things. So we're going to use that. The next side of things is we're going to set up our AI agent. So just go over here to AI agent. I'll also show you some cool things that are happening as well with AI agents here at the very end. I haven't had a chance to make these into YouTube videos as of yet, but they'll be here soon. Uh, the prompt, right? You can define a prompt below, but in reality, right? Like we're getting our prompt from the chat message received. So like if this was in the middle of a workflow, you would define your prompt here, but since we're gonna run this chat message received, uh, we're gonna be doing that. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do on here is set up a chat model. So just click this plus icon over here and then go into open AI. Okay, so this is where things are gonna change. So a few things, first thing what we're gonna do is go in over here and credential to connect with. Now I've already set up my open AI account but you might not have this already. So what we're gonna do is click this pencil icon over here. And then you can see like my connection has tested successfully, we're good to go. Um, but essentially what you need to do is enter in your API key over here and how you can get this, right? A few things that you need to do. So once we're into this over here, just click this gear icon for settings. And then what we're gonna do over here is go into API keys. So what we're gonna do is create a new secret key and then just name it whatever you want. I'm gonna say test for video. Um, this is my third time doing this because I accidentally made a small mistake, but that's okay. We're going to say create secret key. And then you're going to have this key over here. Now, here's the important part. This key will go away uh, once you close this out. So make sure to copy it in a secured place or and at least get this into any end. So just copy this by default. Then we're going to do is go back over into your workflow and then paste this API key. Now, also to mention, you need to fund your open AI account. So make sure you add in a credit card on that side of things. So that way uh, you could use it. And just because you created an API key doesn't mean it's ready right away. Um, if you're getting some errors with connection, try again, maybe in 15 minutes, 30 minutes, um, you just created an account, you just created an API key, right? Obviously today, uh, as of eight, seven, it's gonna be a very popular day on OpenAI's website. Uh, so uh, they might be boggled down a little bit, but regardless, I promise you this will work over time. Just put in your API key in over here, test it, and you should get this connection tested successfully. All right, so now what we have is this over here, right? And by the way, every time you add in the OpenAI chat model, uh, your information is saved over here. So you don't have to do that every single time, just once. Okay, uh, next thing is choosing the model. So by default right now it's GPT-41 mini, but I assume that's gonna change really, really fast. So what we're gonna do is just click on this, and what you'll see is you have all these models. Now, what you're gonna do is keep scrolling down and you'll see we have five. So we have five over here. We have mini as well as nano. So I'm just gonna switch from 4.1 mini into five mini over here. And if you have workflows that are already going right now, I would recommend that you probably switch these in as well. So a GPT-5 mini on this side of things. And there's a lot of different options that you could choose as well. And I covered all these options in my AI agent video. So I recommend you guys check that out after you get this set up um, so that way you can explore. But anyways, like your frequency penalty, a response format, temperature, timeout, different things like that. Okay, so that is how you set up your chat model. A few other recommendations is we're gonna be doing this chat over here. I'd recommend you just set up memory. 
So to set up simple memory, this is how many uh, pieces of conversation going back and forth between you and the model uh, that it stores a memory, right? The longer that you have this, the more expensive the tokens will cost. But uh, by default, it's five. I'm just gonna raise it to 10 for you guys in this video. So I'll set 10 on this side of things. Okay. okay, so let's test this out now. So we're gonna send a message below to trigger the chat workflow. So what I'm gonna do over here is write this out. So I need help learning how to create a pandas data frame from a dictionary. Can you give me two examples? All right, so I have this going over here and you can see everything is running, right? This runs over here. It's going to open AI right now. And then sure, here are two common ways to make a pandas data frame from a dictionary. Example one, dictionary of lists. So you see this example over here output on that side of things and then example two, right? So we have that over here. If you want the outer keys to be rows, right? Orient equals index and goes through that example on that side of things. So again, very, very basic example, but we're able to get five working relatively easy on that side of things. I also wanted to go over a few other things that are in the AI agent that I haven't had a chance to make into a video as of yet, but I wanna give you guys no, as much value as possible for this video. So first thing on here, you can actually have fallback models now. So if you click this over here, you can actually set up a second model in over here. So let's say for example, like you're using GPT mini, right? And then you wanna use a fallback, I don't know, a GPT-5. I mean, I would probably recommend going with another provider as another example as a fallback, just in case something happens with OpenAI or something like that. But regardless, let's say we wanna use it in this use case. And again, I haven't really explored this as of yet for the video I'm gonna make on the channel, but uh, I felt like I just wanted to throw this in here for you guys. So you can see like what I have now in here is I have our mini model, right? And then we have just our standard GPT-5 as a fallback. Another thing that's pretty cool in here is now you can set an AI agent as a tool. So if you go over here and say AI agent, right? You can have this on this side of things as a tool. And then again, you can set another chat model. So we can go on over here and search open AI. And now you can set up your open AI. You go over here, it's at GPT-5. We'll use Nano on this side of things, right? And you can have an AI agent as a tool to your main AI agent. Again, I'll have, I'll have a separate video on this right over here and I'll have a separate video on these. So I'm just gonna delete these really fast and go over here and remove the fallback model. I do wanna give you guys one word of advice as well. So. Um, we don't have this anymore. Delete that. Okay. So I tested this a little bit today. And one thing I was kind of disappointed with, with GPT-5 is the data it's trained on is still stuck in 2024. I was really expecting mo more modern data on here, but it's trained through June, 2024. Um, one source also said September, but when I was testing with the model, it kept telling me uh, June when I tried to get real time information. So what you need to do to get real-time information on here is use a tool called Perplexity. Um, I do have a Perplexity video already recorded here and uploaded unlisted on the channel. So if you go through the NAN playlist, you can check it out. It's probably not gonna be live this week. It might be live next week, but using Perplexity, you can get real-time information. Just use this as a tool. Um, highly recommend it on that side of things. Just because this model, you know, it's trained on older, older information, right? Like I can't find out information that happened last week, two weeks ago, a month ago, or any time throughout 2025. Or as this model over here, or not this model, but uh, using perplexity as a tool in here can allow us to get real-time information, oh, nearly real-time information. Um, but yeah, so essentially that's it for GPT-5, relatively easy. I recommend you go through and update your chat models, right, to get over here, five mini, nano, or just five in general, because they are powerful models, right? There's a lot of improvements associated with it on that side of things, or feel free to test a little bit before you make those changes. And yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, I am also taking on customers for NAN. So if you need any help with any workflows or anything like that, I'm gonna put the link down below in the description. Thanks guys for checking out the video. If you're new, make sure to subscribe and check out some other NAN or coding videos here on the channel because I upload a ton.